is a CIA whistleblower. Um, he is also um, the co-host of Political Misfits. He's an award-winning author, a journalist. He's an amazing person all around. Um, John Kerryak, thank you for coming to the show. So happy to have you here. Thanks so much for that kind introduction. Happy to see you. So here we are um, in this political point in history where we're on the verge of nuclear war. Um, our freedom of speech and freedom of press is at you know the greatest threat it's ever been with the imprisonment of Julian Assange. And one of the things I wanted to mention in your intro was that you are a tireless and loud advocate of Julian Assange. So let's start there. Um, and if you could lead in kind of with your whistleblowing and then what led you to um, being such a strong voice for Julian. Well, thanks for that. You know, nobody has ever asked me why I'm a supporter of Julian Assange. And there's actually some background to it. Uh, so my own whistleblowing was, uh, came as a result of my service in the CIA. I spent 15 years in the CIA, rose up quickly through the ranks. I was the chief of CIA counterterrorism operations in Pakistan after 9-11. Um, I led the capture of Abu Zubaydah, who we believed at the time to be the number three in Al Qaeda. That turned out to not be true. Um, I, I'm sad to say that I stood alone in my opposition to his torture and uh, went public with that information in December of 2007. Uh, as you might imagine, the entire weight of the U.S. government fell on my head, and um, and to make a very long story short, I ended up serving 23 months in a federal prison as a result of my whistleblowing. I have zero regrets, like literally zero regrets, and um, have um, advised other whistleblowers and would-be whistleblowers, especially involved in the national security, uh, in what to do or not do. Um, I urge them to not make the mistake that I made by waiting to hire an attorney I tell whistleblowers that they should hire an attorney first, uh, an attorney who is skilled in whistleblower defense, uh, so that they have somebody sitting next to them, literally, when they decide to blow the whistle. You know, in the beginning, Tara, I, I wasn't so much interested in Julian Assange. I, I had a little bit of a personal problem with Julian in that the initial the initial cache of, uh, of documents released to WikiLeaks by... Uh, by Chelsea Manning happened to include my social security number. Uh, there was a, an obscure cable in there about uh, a trip that I was taking to the Middle East when I was working on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee staff. Mm -hmm. And um, as just part of the normal, you know, travel standard operating procedure, I included my social security number and that was leaked to WikiLeaks. Now, thank goodness nothing ever happened, but it kind of made me angry. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up going to prison a year later or a couple of years later anyway. And uh, when I got out, I got hired by the Greek government to help them write a new whistleblower protection law. So I connected with a woman by the name of Dr. Sulet Dreyfus, who uh, is the founder of an NGO based in Australia called Blueprint for Free Speech. Well, Sulet, it turns out, was also the co-founder of WikiLeaks with Julian. Um, they went back decades together in Australia. And um, we were out for a walk in Athens one day uh, after having spent the day with the, the Ministry of Justice. And she said to me, why is it that you're not one of the big Julian Assange supporters. I, I never see you ever associated with Julian Assange. Again, this is 2015. And I said, well, to tell you the truth, I'm kind of mad that that my social security number was leaked in that in that tranche of information. And I've heard from other people for whom I have great respect that Julian's got kind of a problem with women. And, uh, you know, I'm the father of a daughter. I wouldn't want anybody treating my daughter that way. And she said, well, you know, I think that a lot of that just is simply not true. I think the police put these women up to that and blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So the more I looked into it, the more I thought, now that this is far more complicated than I had realized that it was. And then talking to yet more people that I respect, 
uh, here in the Washington area, especially people involved in the issues of transparency and freedom of speech and freedom of the press, frankly, I came to realize that um, that in a way we're all, I don't mean to sound like a cliche, but in a way we're all Julian Assange. That if we don't stand up for Julian Assange, there's just not going to be anybody to stand up for us. And right. if, if the government successfully prosecutes Julian Assange, who's not even an American citizen, by the way, right. on on charges under the Espionage Act, well, then certainly the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, any journalist involved in the national security is next. And once that precedent is set, the government can do anything it wants. So whatever differences I may have had with Julian Assange, I put behind me years ago. And uh, and I stand up for him just the same way that I know that he would stand up for me. That's that's really interesting to hear. And um, as you're watching our um, the, the attacks under the Biden administration of our free speech, I'm sure you're well aware of how DOJ and CIA and FBI are all being pretty weaponized with this administration um, to suppress truth, like, for instance, with the Hunter Biden laptop. Yeah. And so I think WikiLeaks and Julian Assange's presence is greatly missed because, you know, um, when the New York T Post tried to uh, raise it up, of course, they were censored. And mm -hmm. and I guess last Monday were disinvited to a Biden administration event. So they're, they're even just excluding media. Well, there's um, there's talk yeah. now that they're going to be excluded from the White House newsroom which I think is even more dangerous. Right. Uh, I mean, the New York Post, you can agree or disagree with their editorial line, but the New York Post is a serious journalistic outlet. Yeah, it is.